Yo, what's up? This is Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this Two Minute Tuesday, I wanna talk all about the new coreless function in Power BI. All right, so the new coreless function was just released recently and I decided that, hey, let's do a video so I can show people how it works, all right? So you guys know what I like to do. Instead of all this talking, let's do what? Let's head over to my laptop. So let's, let's say you design a report that looks like this. And for the most part, your end users are happy with it because if they select every year but 2011, both the total sales for this year and the total sales for last year populates, right? But if I select 2011, it shows blank and they go, Patrick, I don't want it to show blank. I want to show zero because we actually didn't make any sales in 2010. We started a business in 2010 in the last quarter of 2010, but we didn't make any sales. So we actually had a big fat donut and we like to show that. So how do we do it? So let me show you guys how to do it. So what I would do is I would head over to DAX Studio and I like to use DAX Studio because it gives me more of a full feature development environment, right? For writing my DAX. So I would define my measure. So I'd say define measure and I would define the measure on the table where I want it to exist. And then what I would do is I would tuck the same period last year because I've already went through work calculating that out, tuck it in a variable. And then I write a little logic to say if same period last year is blank, return a zero, otherwise return same period last year. And I like to use variables if I'm gonna do reference, you know, a measure or expression multiple times. So I calculate it once, right? So I tuck it in there and then if I run this, so we'll go ahead and run this, it'll actually show a zero, which is perfect. And I'm like, yeah, this is great. But right here, Right. That's a lot of code for me to write. And I want to get just a little more efficient. So let me show you how I can use coalesce to fix this up. So instead, right, same logic, same logic at the beginning. But instead of the if that you see over here, instead of the if I write coalesce and what coalesce does is it says for the return, the first non blank value. So it's automatically going to check. So I don't have to do this is blank check. This if is blank check. Coalesce is going to say, is this value blank? Yes, skip it. Go to the next one and return to zero, right? So if I run this and go to the results, I get the exact same results. You see, I get the exact same results, which is perfect. This is what I want, right? So the last thing I would do is I would just copy right here all the way to my result set, head back over to Power BI, I'm gonna head back over to Power BI, create my measure. I know it all works. I'm going to create my measure because I tested in DAX Studio, paste that in there, control V, and then get rid of these little brackets. I don't want those, All right? Click check. And then what I'm gonna do is take this blank and get my version two right here, drop it right there. And now you can see zero. So if I choose 2012, it returns a value. If I choose 2011, it returns zero. What? This is bananas. It just works. It's not that it's going to perform better, right? But it's just easier to read and it makes me more efficient. I have to write less code. What do you guys think? Have you checked out this new code less function? Have you used it before? You know what to do. Let's continue the conversation. Where? In the comments below. If it's your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, hit that subscribe button. If you like my video, big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and myself, Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.